Okay guys, welcome back. So today, we're here to talk to you about the stiffest driver shaft that we've ever tested. Yeah, that's starting to become like, almost like a badge of honor in the shop, mm -hmm. like whose company makes kind of the, and Inventus Black was kind of there for a bit, I guess, but um, this is something else. This is quite something. Um, so last year you used the first generation uh, RPG yep. Blue. The blue uh, one, the, yep. The, uh, the four series, there was a, a three series and a four series, four being, the kind of designated tip stiffness of the Acra range. 100 is the softest tip they do all the way up to the four, right. which is the stiffest that they do. So you and I both actually used that range in our driver last year. I remember, yeah, that's um, right. And we both really liked it, didn't we? I, it's a great shaft. Really yeah. liked a lot about it. I mean, we're gonna dive into a little bit about um, what does someone encounter when they go with a shaft this stiff? Yeah. People are always wondering, you know, should we go with lower, a stiffer shaft for lower launch, lower spin? You know, is that even a real thing? Is there a a, a shot pattern that, mm. that really is is kind of um, you know driven from the shaft stiffness? Right. And then we'll throw something softer in there. Mm. Um, we're gonna give you a little bit of you know uh, the opposite, and we'll see what we see from that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, let's have a few swings at it, uh, and then we'll talk through some of the tech. Perfect. It's nice. Very good. Yes, it gives you. Uh, Pretty stable sensation. I really feel like you've got to put some power into that to get it to actually have any feel to it. That's handsome. That's nice looking. Love the shape on that. Really nice flight on this, yeah. So you were mentioning the diameter of it under the grip is a bit bigger. I definitely feel that. Yeah, so 620 um, butt diameter, it's, it's a way of stiffening up the butt section. Right. Uh, a little bit for, for those who, who kind of do load it and handle a touch more, but last year's had the same butt oh, it diameter. Was the same. Yeah, it was okay. 620 also. Uh, do you feel the difference in, in, in stiffness? The torque has came down uh, a yeah. little bit this year. Uh, it doesn't, so I think the, the blue version, we always yeah. mention like, on paper and you CPM did and you'd say it's super stiff, yeah. but I would hit it and I'd go, mm. it doesn't really feel doesn't that feel stiff. Like that. And so you had mentioned the torque was the reason for that. It definitely feels stiffer than that. Yeah. It's not unpleasant though. I think I'm trying to make a few swings and identify it, but I definitely feel a little bit of movement, mm. but overall it's still very stable, but it's not, it doesn't have a rebar feel now that they've lowered the torque. Yeah, so I mean, this this literally stiffer in, in, in every single way. Every category. Just every category. Huh. Yeah, the, uh, the CPM is, um, 12 CPM stiffer, uh, the torque is lower. As I say, every Across single the category. They've, they've stiffened up the butt section, the mid section, and the tip section. So hmm. you, you said it off camera, trying to separate it from, from the other shafts uh, in the, product in, in line, the right? lineup. Yeah, whether yeah. it's TZ5, you know, what, what, any other shaft that would be considered in this, you know, you know tip stiff, low launch, right. low spin kind of category, tour, you know, shaft design category. They've taken this and really made it hmm. as extremely stiff as they're probably comfortable with retaining the same feel. Yeah. No, so far I like the feel of it. It definitely encourages me to put like a very aggressive swing on it, which mm. to be honest with you is, for me, is um, is helpful. Yeah, those are some real good numbers. Yeah, I actually missed how good that last one was in terms of numbers. Yeah, lots of speed, yeah. Well, that's good. Very good strike. A um, little misread on the, the dynamic loft, but 175, yeah, that was That'd really That'd be a good, good kind of golf course flight, wouldn't it? Mm. It's nice, little, little lower spin because I turn it over, but yeah, but it's tight, isn't it? It's not getting far off line. No, I wouldn't complain at all. It's pretty good. Yeah, groove low, but it was a nice flight. It does feel like the dispersion on this is really quite good. Good, good numbers. Um, not overly low spin. Uh, launch is, is definitely on the little bit in the low side. Definitely. Which is fine. One more degree degree would be over the moon. I mean, yeah, I think I, I maybe struck a couple on the lower side of the face. Yeah, and then that, that might have brought the spin up. But other, I mean, as a golf course flight, I would love that. And that's what I was saying before. I think the the strike pattern is definitely tighter than I'm used to. I yep. would usually tend to see it move around a bit more. Okay, let's uh, let's pop something a touch softer in there. 
Okay, so something a touch softer. Touch. Just a touch. <laughs> and now this is the stiffest one. That's right. It's the 505 double X. That's right. Uh, not to be confused with a double X. Yes, um, it's not that. It's not that. So it'll be interesting to see what we uh, find in terms of the dynamic measurements that we see, loft, mm. uh, strike point, lie angle, all those sorts of things that we're measuring um, and then the shaft is playing a significant role in that. Okay. I do like it. There's nothing not to like. <laughs> Sounded good that one too. Yeah, hit it well. There's no doubt right away I'm feeling, so with the Acra, I felt like if I'm gonna miss, it's for me kind of giving up on it a bit, it's yeah. gonna go left. With this, I already feel like I'm gonna miss right. That's it well. Just right away, there's shape on it, isn't there? Mm hmm. It's a good strike. Really good strike. Last couple have been really nice. I think what it comes back to is something you, you said when we tested the monster shaft was that when you're going between shafts that feel a certain way, yes, there's, there's differences to how you're delivering this. Definitely. I get, I get more uh, in to out and I have to feel like I have to start the ball left because I know it's going to curve. So like mm -hmm. that one started kind of close to where I was hitting the RPG, but the RPG would just kind of stay there yep. on the left side. And I know this one's going to turn over. So no, you're right. You'll slowly kind of get more in to out to offset it. Definitely. Okay, let's set a couple more and then we'll go back. I'm going to go okay. back to another little set with the RPG. Yeah, a little high in the head, but it gets away with it with that one. Definitely. Yeah. Every, every one you've hit well with that auto, with auto flex has looked like that. Exactly. Yeah, you just want to aim it down the left side of the fairway, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay, so switching back, and, and the reason we're doing this, we want to we want to see how the swing evolves, how the ball flight evolves, and, and mm. kind of we think there is a difference when you swing something like like that from a field perspective to yeah. something like this, and and obviously how it's going to affect your delivery. I think that's what you always say is the most interesting thing about a shaft fit mm -hmm. is how it plays with the delivery. Definitely. Not so much looking for launch and spin, but what yeah. does it do to your path and your angle of attack and stuff? It, like it that. really can manipulate your golf swing. Hit that well. It's just it's really exactly interesting. Exactly what I expected to happen. So you kind of had your swing has ended up getting a little bit behind you, but this one doesn't curve back. So interesting. Starting to get it back. I think one of the, the other subtly unique things about this shaft that we, we you know, have to mention before the end of the video, Matty, is the uh, balance point. Right. Uh, it, is, it is quite considerably higher um, than okay. some of the other shafts that have this type of design. Interesting. Um, you know, normally shafts that are very tip stiff have, have a very low balance point and, and you know, that's lots of material being used to stiffen up the, the shaft at the bottom. Right. This actually has quite a high balance point. So, you know, again, I think probably most of the testing on tour that was done with this was probably with Gary Woodland. Okay, because um, he likes the head to be heavier normally. Yeah, generally likes the head to be, you know, he's he been pl uh, playing ping for a right, while, going between TaylorMade and ping, but uh, I know at the time when this was being developed, he probably was using mm. a G410 for a decent period of that. So again, testing with that type of player where you're kind of going to give them some mass you don't want it all to be in the in the shaft. You, so raise the balance point right. a little bit, pop a little bit of head weight back in there, raise the MOI of the head, raise the ball speed a little mm. bit. So talking about the build, you know, probably specifically for that type of player that this concept was in mind for. It makes a lot of sense because then you wouldn't want to just have very stiff shaft overall and then a very heavy feel yeah. down by the head. You kind of can't really play with those two. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> See, that's kind of the one where I started on the line. Autoflex, it's curving yeah. 20, 30 yards right. This one, it just sort of stayed there. I 
I would like that flight. Mm. Start that on the right side. Yeah. Yeah, if you knew you could rely on that just to drift back to the left of your start line. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're pretty uh, consistently 174 when, mm. you, when you hit that one pretty well. just immediately just it elevates into a different flight window. It's really cool, yeah, it's way higher, isn't it? That was good. This seems to pop a lot more dynamic loft on the club, which is does. interesting. Yeah, I would, I would say it definitely sits a little bit higher overall. I felt that as soon as the ball took off, you could tell it launched and spun a bit more. Mm -hmm. It's more dynamic loft on it. Yeah, similar speed um, being delivered. Dynamic loft, quite a difference. I mean, look at that droop. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, the difference in the, the downward deflection of the head through the shaft uh, being so much softer. That's wow, it's almost three degrees. Almost three degrees of droop. But I mean, thank God it does, because as it is, I'm trying to offset it down the left. Yeah. So it's flattening it's it out at least. It's trying to flatten out a little bit. So That's wild. Pretty cool to I'll see. Have we ever seen uh, that much of a difference in dynamic loft? Yeah, line. I mean, and look, so I mean, just, just highlighting this right here. I mean, that dynamic loft is three degrees, just about three degrees higher with a ball that's turning over more. So it's losing, it's Good actually point. losing uh, loft. Right. So it is moving in that direction, but the face is also ro rotating at the same time. And so that's a shaft that's moving. I mean, if anyone ever asks, what are shafts doing near impact? This one was doing a lot, a lot and the Acro was probably more. remaining fairly stable. Yeah. But cool to see them side by side where we really are, are kind of able to get, you know, quite a comparable result. It just gets there in two totally different ways. Definitely. I think Autoflex has always been something that's encouraged kind of the higher draw flight. Yeah. And then that RPG, as I was saying, I, I can't imagine a shaft better suited for someone to hit a bit of a fade, but keep this, the flight yeah. down. Not a high fade, but kind of a penetrating fade. I definitely felt like I needed to put some speed into the swing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend that shaft necessarily for someone who's kind of slow and deliberate in yep. their transition. Probably someone would like it better that gives it a bit of kind of speed from the top. Yeah, just, just very interesting. Again, I'm just kind of analyzing the numbers as we, we kind of go here. You know, more angle attack, more upward deflection, right. path. Uh, so we will see more outward deflection. Um, oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so oh, the shaft wow. will, will kind of kick out a little bit more. Huh. Yeah, so I mean, just a dynamically different different delivery and, you know, fitters out there looking for ways in which they can kind of push a golf club in a certain direction mm. uh, in order to help, you know, their, their client. I mean, you've got to understand the dynamics of the way these shafts are moving. Uh, in motion to, to be able to understand how you can start to push that head subtly in different ways. Well, the two completely different ball flights without ever touching the um, adjustable sleeve. They're yeah. both just sitting at straight sitting nine, and that's just a shaft change. One's quite a high draw club, and one's kind of more of a straight, maybe towards a fade and much lower in flight. Yeah, 15 feet in, uh, in peak height difference. So That's pretty dramatic. It's, yeah. it's quite, quite a lot. Very cool. Cool. Okay, guys, um, so Acra RPG Tour, um, you know, certainly if it's not the stiffest we've tested, it's certainly up there. It's got to be up there. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, if we hit it side by side with Ventus, you'd probably tell me they both feel quite, com you know, comparable in terms of uh, the, the profile of the shaft I to think you. so. Yeah, and I think it's stuff like the Hulk. I yeah. don't know if it is as stiff, but it was like the feel of it was so overly stiff. Yeah. This would probably be, for someone who likes a bit of feel, a better alternative. Mm. If you've tried the Hulk and maybe you like, because I liked the flight of the Hulk. Mm -hmm. I just didn't feel like I could swing with it. It yeah, just had yeah. no feel. I would say this might be a better choice to get a yeah. bit of that feel in there. A shaft test that turned into more of a, more of a, a kind of dynamic, yeah. you know, uh, measurement. Absolutely. You know, test on the dynamic influence of, uh, of the shaft to the head and how, how the same delivery can be kind of, you know, manipulated. That's probably one of the more dramatic differences I've seen between two yeah. shafts. I know for sure. And, and probably this one in a sense had a more traditional outcome. You yeah. know, we've seen tests in the past that we went, well, don't always think that this is going to happen. That this was probably as traditional a test as we've ever seen. Good point. Soft going a bit, you know, Down overdrawn, right. going a bit higher. 
you know, we have seen in the past. Um, but that's the point of, I mean, you've always said with shaft testing, yes, the traditional wisdom could occur yeah. or it might not. That's part of, you know, the dynamics of this test. It, it did shake out that For way. For sure. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, guys. Um, I think that's t uh, TXG is scientific yes. best in, in these that's, types of tests. That's what people came for. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully this is, is kind of got people, you know, intrigued as to, you know, different, the way a fitter's mind may work by pulling one shaft versus another. Totally. And, more more value to the fitting process for Absolutely. sure. Good stuff. Okay, stay tuned again. We'll see you again soon.